Hi, I'm James. Thanks for watching. I'm making a shift in my design strategy for anterior teeth, particularly multiple teeth, because historically I've always used biocopy. Our design strategy is we'll still use a biocopy scan in the catalog. However, we're going to use biogeneric individual and then switch that into biojaw using the adjust morphology feature in the software. It's the same steps that I use for a digital wax up for InLab. So what we do is we choose a template and then we fit the design process into the biocopy scan. Now the value that I have found using BioJaw is that the proposals, the line angles and the emergence are so much cleaner. I can design quicker, I get a cleaner mill, so I have less adjusting and shaping to do afterwards. The BioCopy feature in the last few versions of the software outside of 385 has not been really clean. You'll get the basic shape, but the emergence and the line angles aren't that clean because you have to do a lot of tool manipulation, particularly cervically in that emergence area, it's usually under emerged. So as a result, you have a lot more design to do, and then you have to shape more to make it look clean. So in this case, what we did is we did a mock-up. After the prep, we still made transitionals. We used that as the biocopy catalog, and then in our design sequence, we went ahead and used the BioJaw feature, fitting that into the biocopy catalog, and it really worked well. So the video for the design workflow will demonstrate that. Historically, I've always used biocopy and I still believe in biocopy. I want to work the case up first. I want a prototype that helps me to know how to reduce, right? And it also will help me with transitional teeth, which are provisionals, if I need them. And most of my anterior cases, I don't do in the same appointment. And there's reasons for that. Number one, I want the patient to emotionally close. Number two, the amount of time in my schedule, whether I have time to be creative and precise with my anterior shaping and texturing, because if I'm under pressure, boom, I lose that artistic edge. And the other reason why is because of the refractory index of our materials and dehydration issues. And what do we mean by that? If you look at a cloud, right? A cloud has air and it has moisture. The contrast between the refractory index of the air and moisture is to a point of where it makes it white. And that's why we see clouds that are gorgeous, right? And they're really light. Well, the same thing happens in the mouth. For instance, you have a refractory index of dentin and enamel, then you have hydration issues, right? So what happens, get this, if you hydrate the teeth for 10 seconds, it will make the teeth around 20% more opaque and that will last for almost up to 48 hours. So one of the things we do in our Sarah Clinical Theater before we scan or even etching and drying and and getting ready to bond is that we dehydrate the teeth. So it changes the refractory index and you get more opaque, which means higher value. So that's a problem with matching. So a lot of my anterior cases, if I'm wanting to blend and match, I want the teeth hydrated that I'm blending too. And I made this comment on a forum lately of where that's why we have to be careful on how we blend in a single central or two centrals or even four anterior teeth because they have to blend to the teeth next door. So this is a case re review that will go through those aspects. We're gonna start with the design video that's already posted on the site. This is kind of the intro for the design video after we did the design video. But this is a great case that we're working on here is four anterior teeth. We did the mock-up, yes, right. We did the mock-up in in-lab. So we did our digital waxing in in-lab. We're slightly creating a little fuller look, except for that crown on number eight. That's a little too full and bulky. So in in-lab, what we're gonna do is use the removal tool and kind of prep those teeth a little bit and then do a digital wax up. And then from that digital wax up, we went ahead and printed the model and I made a traditional type of provisional. And the provisional we used here was the B1, and that's the Luxatemp fluorescence B1. 
and we cemented that in and we used a transitional cement. It's the uh, Telio temp, except for number eight. Number eight, we use Tylock by Dent Supply, Serona. Tylock is a polycarboxylate cement and it's one of the best opaquers I've ever used. And I wanted to test it out on the transitional teeth. What I have found with Luxatemp B1 fluorescence is that if that's pretty close to what I want, that's either going to be a B1 MT Emax or a BL4 MT Emax that works pretty well. But Tylock is one of my best opaquers and it's not a resin. So you want to make sure you have a robust enough prep for adequate engineered volume within your crown and on a tooth that's dark that has the endo in it and we're trying to mask it out we're going to prep more aggressively anyway because i want a thicker ceramic and then the other thing i did that's unique on this case and this photo is the day that we seeded so the gums look just a little used <laughs> but what you'll see is on the margin what i did is i dropped the margin a little bit more after the fabrication of the crown and then i used a dentinol shade a35 impressed direct and i extended the margin on the crown bonding to the crown right so i'm bonding this paste to the crown i'm extending it more subgingival using that paste and I'm curing it. You have to cure it quickly and make sure you don't lock it on. And then we'll finish the cure and then we'll polish those margins in. Now, why am I doing that? I can get a better mask out of that darker root. And this is a new technique I've been using lately. And I find that I don't get that gray area cervically. And I can mask, it's almost a biomimetic concept of where I can mask out that dark root better than if I had placed the ceramic down there because what it does, it kind of breaks up that fiber optic effect in the Emax. So there's a fiber optic effect that Emax has, right? So if you can put an opaquer down there on a the margin and make that margin out of a different material that separates that, but yet it's bonded to the crown, then, I know this seems off label, doesn't it? Then I get a better mask out. So I'll post the picture once those tissues heal and we'll see how the blend is to see if there's visual tension there. But this is a fun case. So let's go ahead and get started with the software design in that video. And then I'll follow up another video once the tissues heal and we'll kind of analyze the case and see what we learn from it. So post your comments below. I love hearing from you guys. Just say something, right? This website, these videos hit the world. I see users from all over the world. And my main emphasis now in my teaching theater is this site. I'm not traveling like I used to, even though I love to travel. I like being at home with my dog. He's, yeah, he's back there in the hallway waiting for me. And I do teach out of my office, which is my training room. And that's about all I do with hands-on teaching. But most of my information that I'm gonna pass on to the world comes through this site. There he is, you hear him coming. So post your comments and say hi, right? So thanks for watching and I'll see you folks in that next video. Bye now.